YouTube Wardog message over. Welcome back, guys, to our Canadian campaign in Combat Mission Shock Force 2, known as the Carbo Trail. We are here at the briefing screen for Mission 1, which is known as Killing Time. I'm going to read the uh, situation and then we'll, uh, we'll get stuck in. So the situation is 0450 June 22nd, 2008, southern outskirts of Toltamia, 30 kilometers from the Turkish border. The battle group's first objective of the day is to secure the Carbo crossing and the town of Toltamia on the eastern bank. C and D companies will perform the assault on the crossing. Throughout the night, battle group pathfinders and snipers have been observing the outskirts of Toltamia and supplying us valuable information about enemy numbers, equipment and locations. They report that the southern part of the town is being defended by a force of Fedayeen fighters. C Company will be airlifted in by helicopter to an LZ on the eastern bank of the Carbor, just south of the bridge. The LZ has been designated LEAF. Shortly after C Company has been dropped off, D Company will commence its assault on the bridge from its departure point designated Maple. This action will be covered in the following battle. The mission, establish a foothold in the southern quarter of the town by capturing objective Inuit. Engage and destroy enemy forces located in and around the town to prevent the enemy from diverting them to the defense of the bridge to the north. This ba uh, the battle group's light infantry company has been airlifted into a landing zone on the east bank of the Carbo River, just south of the bridge. The following units are present on the map at the start of the mission. C Company, rifle dismounted. Second platoon, assault pioneers from A Company support. Okay, Sergeant. Fire support, two sections of 155mm howitzers in five minutes time. Uh, one FA-18 Hornet and two AH-64D Apaches from the US. These fire support assets will be shared with D Company and E in their missions which will commence very shortly, so do not be too generous with them in this first mission. Enemy forces. The force of Fedigin fighters have been estimated to be approximately 100 men supported by heavy infantry support weapons. Earlier experience has shown that Syrian Fedayeen fighters have benefited from some military training and have been well organised, so you can expect them to put up a determined resistance. Reconnaissance has not found any evidence of IFVs or tanks in the area. The plan. At the start of the mission, your forces should advance carefully towards the town, clearing enemy forces from the northern, central and southern yards prior to launching your assault on the objective. Rules of engagement are limited. The town of Toltamir is heavily populated. Avoid collateral damage to buildings, especially avoid damage to the marked school building. The buildings to the southwest of your objective appear to have been abandoned, so you are free to fire upon them if necessary. Quick look at the tactical map. This is a little bit weird because we, camera-wise, will actually be looking at it from the left end here. And I have had several goes at this first mission. I've actually started this campaign two or three times. So I've done this mission a couple of times. Um, however, let's take a look at the actual map here. Uh, you have to excuse me as well. It's been uh, a few months since I've actually played combat missions. So my controls knowledge may be limited. So we've got the north yard and the west yard down here. We've got the south yard over here. Route 716 at the back. There's the school that we're not allowed to damage. We've got the workshops to the west. Uh, is that west? I actually think we're coming in from the west, which is weird, according to the compass at least. Uh, I'm not sure, to be fair. Might take me a bit to figure out how to uh, orient myself with the compass. But anyway, in the middle, we've got uh, Objective Inuit. This is what we actually need to capture. So normally, well, I say normally, the last few times I've approached this, I've used the North Yard and the West Yard as a fire support position. Um, I've sent one platoon up this way to sort of break in towards Inuit from uh, the left flank. And I've usually sent a platoon up this wadi, uh, which... Is actually, it's a ditch. Like, yeah. From up there it doesn't look like much, but it does provide some cover. Um, and sent them through the south yard, and, and they usually end up about here by the time the mission is over. I'm wondering whether that's really the best strategy. I mean, 
the briefing does say that we should secure the north yard, the west yard, and the south yard before commencing our assault, which is probably why I usually do it that way. These two will definitely be secured. That's I know that anyway, just because of doing it like a couple of times already. I think the plan is going to be relatively similar. We're going to secure these two for a base of fire. Uh, try and assault up through this way. And I might even still send a platoon to try and take this. Although typically they end up receiving fairly heavy casualties. Now... Uh, C Company is under the command of Major Clark. That's his rank insignia there. His name is there. Um, I have noticed a couple of things. I did some research uh, after playing the Canadians a few times to sort of try and figure out something didn't feel right. And uh, what I've discovered is that the insignia for the company commander and the insignia for the platoon commander are the same. That can't possibly be right. They can't both be majors. So I think the uh, platoon commanders are supposed to be lieutenants. They might be captains in the Canadian military, but they certainly aren't majors. But I'm going to go with lieutenant because that's what I'm used to. And there's, this doesn't contradict that. Like, it's definitely not a major. Um, also, something else I've noticed that is probably incorrect is the platoon 2IC teams... Uh, this, I think, based on, uh, you know, best, best guess, is supposed to be a chief warrant officer, which is a regimental sergeant major. There's no way every platoon's 2IC is a regimental sergeant major. So I think, again, this is one where it's either supposed to be a master warrant officer or a warrant officer. So with platoon leaders, I'm going to be referring to them as lieutenant, even though that's not what their rank says. And with the platoon 2ICs, I'm going to be referring to them as sergeant major, uh, even though technically they might be an RSM. But uh, I don't think that they're supposed to be. Uh, let me have a look at my platoon leadership for a second. Um, are they all veteran? It does look like they are. Oh, actually, 7th Platoon is crack. That's got... Is that... That's got to be better than vet, veteran. I'm not experienced enough with the uh, combat mission to know if that's actually better. It sounds like it's better, though. Uh, what I'm trying to do... Okay, so 2 section in 8th Platoon is regular. And so is 1 section. Uh, their 2IC team is also regular, so 8th Platoon is definitely not uh, fantastic. 7th Platoon is pretty good. And 9th Platoon, Veteran, 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 and Veteran. So that's interesting because by default i think i usually end up with ninth platoon being the one to attack at the workshops seventh platoon usually attack the south yard and um eighth platoon usually sort of hang back in reserve and then, then come up to help um i just wanted to check because i've never looked at their skill levels before that i was sending the right platoons to the right places uh but it looks like just inadvertently i probably was I do apologise if the audio keeps dropping, guys. Um, that's because I'm alt-tabbing to check the time. Uh, right, okay. Because right. I don't want to go too far over half an hour. <coughs> okay. I'm going to start issuing some orders, I think. Um, I want to start moving. Oh, poop. Like I said, my uh, knowledge of the controls is probably going to take me a minute to re-establish because I haven't played for a short while. I'm actually going to move these guys right up to the edge just so that they don't have to walk 
an unnecessary distance. I'm going to set them up with too much uh, movement to do because it depends on what the enemy is going to do and um, missions in combat mission they tend to like the enemy has several different scripts that they can follow by scripts I do mean literal scripts like I have previously most commonly spotted enemy troops in the north and west yards but then they retreat or at least they retreat out of the West Yard. But I have once encountered a, a, a version of this mission where they held on to these like something fierce. It was uh, it was pretty uh, impressive. Still got it off them in the end, but um, I think three section from uh, the. Combat Engineers Platoon we're going to put over this way. They're more likely to be needed in that uh, on the left flank. Forward Observer Section uh, I will move down to there. Company HQ we'll take down to there. Um, we do have a couple of uh, machine gun sections I think I'm going to move one of them over here for the time being have a couple of uh, anti-tank sections we don't actually have tanks reported so what I'm gonna do with them is draw an engagement circle 40 or 60 like I'm not bothered about the distance really but just draw an engagement circle around them so that they don't engage anything outside of that circle because they will uh, fire rockets at enemy infantry if they decide that's what they want to do now, I still need to learn, like, I think that's his leadership. Like, the number next to his name is his leadership level. So he's the weapons platoon. Uh, that's Captain. So Captain Lightholder is, uh, is not a good leader, apparently. I'm going to keep him relatively close to the company commander for the time being. All right. Everybody's got their initial orders. I don't see any reason to... Wait, just double check. Does everybody have blue lines? Yeah, everybody has blue lines. So we're going to click the red button. It's going to compute a turn of action. If you're not familiar with combat mission, when you're playing turn-based, every minute is one turn. And what happens is you give your orders, then you click the button, and they just carry it out. If they start getting shot at, it's up to them to decide what to do within the minute. Uh, you can't do anything until the minute has expired. Uh, and this mission, it, we have an hour and 20 minutes to do. It's uh, obviously because of how we're doing turn-based. Uh, it's going to, if it goes down to the full time limit, which it might not. But if it does, it's going to take us longer than an hour and 20 minutes to record it. We seem to be advancing perfectly fine for the time being. We might just be uh, clicking through the first couple of minutes here. Okay, 
so the first minute is done didn't even see anything that's fine uh, we need to click the red button again everybody's still got a fair distance to walk so we'll just let them crack on again and if you haven't seen this uh, game before like the modeling and the accuracy and the weapon systems and everything is super super accurate obviously i think i've picked up a couple of issues with the canadian army's ranks in this game but like in general just look at these models man like it's not a graphically beautiful game but it is very very well done gonna turn my mic gain down a bit because I'm fairly sure it's probably picking up uh, my mouse and keyboard which uh, I'm sure will probably be very annoying because it's a reasonably quiet game at this point once things start going boom it probably won't be why are we paused how did I even pause it I can't remember. I think I just sort of ended the uh, the replay phase there. There was only 14 seconds left of it, so what we're going to do is just uh, no. We already at the right. Okay, uh, I can't even review the replay phase because I pressed the red button. That was uh, what was the pause button? Because I swear it was one of those that I just clicked. Yes, it's escape. Wonderful. You know what? I feel like it did actually say escape to pause when I was uh, when we were looking at it, and I'm just stupid. All right, I'm gonna keep going. We can actually, uh, even on the initial stage, just. machine gun team uh, target arc just because I don't want them engaging anything just yet okay. not like anybody saw anything teams so we've got uh, Master Corporal Leatherwood leading one team and Corporal Rogers leading the other. Uh, we will start moving you guys down this way. I'm not going to bother with bounding overwatch with them just yet. You guys are pretty close to where you're going as well. We'll split you. Master Corporal Asselin. Is that two Corporal Rogers? Yes. <laughs> One section and uh, two section both have a Corporal Rogers. I'm sure the database for like how many names uh, are available is like not massive. Right, we've split the Pioneers down. We've got uh, Master Corporal Green Tree and Corporal McLean. I don't really want them to get too close because they're a pretty valuable asset, but uh, I do think it's uh, time to split them down. Lieutenant Harold, you can probably move to there. And uh, Sergeant Major Gunn. You guys, I don't care. 
thereabouts is still where you are. These guys have still got some distance to go, but let's give you a target arc. here. Two section, Master Corporal Solberg and Corporal Finnegan. There. there is a little bit of a, uh, like, well I say a little bit, arguably it's uh no there's not actually a death lead at this one, it's at the next one, but that's fine. We'll use this road as uh, One section, Master Corporal Abbott and Corporal Finley. Finley and Finnegan now. Two different sections. Uh, three sections already moved up to where they're going. So we've got Master Corporal Burnsides and Corporal McWhite. Uh, Sergeant Major Bergeron further forward. I've actually made contact with some enemy in this one, so I'm going to go back to the start of the minute. I'm going to try and do this the way that Hapless does stuff like this. Uh, we're going to watch the full minute through, see what we need to look at, and then we'll pay more attention to uh, what we've got. So that's an enemy sniper. It does look like they're withdrawing. So the only thing we've really got to review is what did that look like? I don't need to... Uh... So because we're on basic training difficulty, we can see what weapons they've got. We can see basically all the same information about the enemy as we can about ourselves. Um, so we know that uh, this sniper team is green experience. Uh, their morale is okay and minus one. Uh, I really need to try and figure out and I will do at some point what the numbers mean. This is their experience, this is their morale, this is their physical state and I think the number next to the leadership, uh, lead, leader's name is their leadership. Um, but it seems like OK minus one is like, well, surely then they'd just be the level under OK. I feel like the number is the effect that they have on other people around them, maybe. I don't know. Either way, uh, Baham Dan here, the sniper team, like they disappear off that way, they're, uh, they're withdrawing up there. That's fine. Okay, our artillery support is now available. Tell you what, we've been recording for 20 minutes uh, and we've played the first five minutes of the campaign, uh, of the mission, but uh, we haven't yet done very much. 
I don't anticipate in the next six minutes of recording that we're going to encounter the enemy. So I'm going to cut this one a little shorter than half an hour so that you guys don't necessarily have to sit through half an hour with absolutely nothing happening. So what we're going to do is say uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you're enjoying. We've made contact with the enemy. Hopefully, um, almost certainly in the next episode, we'll be chewing at people. Uh, so thank you very much for watching if you've got this far please do uh, leave a comment down below uh, if you've got any criticism or any tips uh, for how to play combat mission it's uh, much appreciated and i will see you on part two of uh, killing time when hopefully we start killing the enemy thank you guys for watching the time means to be war dog out